Name it for. Did I name it? Hello. Welcome to the Common Sense Show. Here we are. This is, um, this is meant to be a video where we just, where we just talk about things. A video where we Let's just make sure that the sound is working. Hopefully. Where we just talk about things. Great. So the theme of this show is just to share some sense of common, some sort of common sense. And I hope that other people get involved in the discussion. A lot of people have grown up in this digital era, and some of the things that seem like common sense aren't obvious to other people anymore. Like you shouldn't be eating Tide Pods, but people imitate others, and so. They see videos of people eating Tide Pods and they're like, cool, I'll do it too. And then sure enough, you got people dying from eating Tide Pods. I'll make that an episode one of these days, but today's topic of discussion for the video is going to be, you know, complaining at work. Why would you ever complain at work? Honestly, there's no point of complaining at work. You see your coworkers and think, oh man, I don't want to be like them. They're miserable at their jobs. They complain about everything. They don't want to do any of the work. And unfortunately, if you have this attitude, then you're not going to move up in the company. You, you probably won't get a raise and you probably won't have more opportunities. And this ties in with the, the theme of imitating others. So you and your coworkers are at the bottom of the ladder in whatever job you're at, and you're just acting like them. You're just imitating what they're doing because that's the natural environment. That's the natural flow of things. And sure enough, you wonder, well, why don't I get promoted? Why don't I get a raise? Why don't I get anywhere? Because you're just complaining at work. Complaints and criticisms are like homing missiles. They always come right back to you. I'll say that one more time. Complaints and criticisms are like homing beacons, homing missiles. They always come right back to you. All this complaining at work is not going to get you where you want to go. This should be common sense, but I think for a lot of people it's not. Because you just have this whole theme of just being a product of your environment. So your family's not perfect, but you grew up with them your whole life, and like it or not, you might start acting like they they do. You might start doing some of the things they do. You might start repeating some of the same mistakes that they do. Why? Because that's part of how your brain works. It's just trained to fit in, to be part of the tribe that's... Back in the caves, in the fields, that's how you survived. You kept your mouth shut, and you followed the group. The individual was more likely to die out than the group. Now here in America, I feel like it's just the individual for themselves. Because unfortunately, the group doesn't always have your best interests at heart. So what can you do about complaining and criticizing? Well, I'm thinking of a wise quote that I've, I've heard. Uh, how did it go? Any idiot can have success and copy that. It takes an intelligent person to have a failure and turn it into a success. Yeah, it takes an intelligent person to turn a failure into a success. To turn those sour lemons 
into lemonade. Not the lemons, the sour lemons into lemonade. I struggle with this. I'm sure other people struggle with this because they see a bad situation and they want to escape from it and they're not able to fix it. But your mind can be your greatest foe or your greatest ally. How can you turn a worse situation into a better one? How can you stop complaining and criticizing? You can get into the solution mindset. Anybody can complain, but if you see a problem, why not just look for a solution? You know, my parents always complain about, oh, it's, we live in the suburb, it's so difficult to find parking in the city. That's why we're in the suburb. It's so, just so difficult to find parking in the city and it costs so much money and all this. And you can just complain that too, like, oh, parking's expensive. Oh, your car will get towed. Oh, somebody will mess it up. And you live with this worry. Or you could just start looking for solutions. One of the things I found was uh, a residential parking uh, app from the city. And what it showed was all the residential areas and the permit parking areas, the zone parking areas, the buffer, buffer zoned areas, and the streets that were just unmarked. And those streets that were just unmarked, you can just park at on all the time. Granted, this thing doesn't really find you parking in the center of the loop in Chicago. But that's okay. I'm not looking to solve that problem just yet. So what are some of the problems that you have at work? Some of the things that you want fixed? Were some of the things that I would complain about at work all the time or do like my co-workers oh we got to stay late oh we keep having this same problem every year with the TVs there's just a giant mess of TVs maybe I should go into a little bit more detail so it was one of the problems that, that I always had I was in this uh, this trade show industry job and we worked in a warehouse so the main part of the job was just to build the trade show booths to make sure all the parts were there and then to pack them down all nicely so when they got to the show in another city that everything wasn't a mess and at least had some sort of organization and you know the labor teams there who weren't necessarily always associated with our company couldn't come up with any lies or excuses it's like hey we sent these parts oh we're missing this well then we could just check in our end and if it wasn't missing in our end then we know that they, they'd had it up, have it on their end. You know, and it holds them accountable. It's a little bit of the trade show industry. So, what are some of the problems, the problems that we would have a lot in the trade show, in our, the warehouse, I should say. One of uh, the problems was that we we had this cage in the corner of uh, the building that housed a lot of the TVs. And in this cage, there were TVs that were in these big black metal cases. And then there was also TVs that were just left in their boxes. And then outside the cage, to the left, there was also more metal TVs and cases. And, and none of this, most of them weren't labeled at all. So if you needed to find a 30 inch TV or a 55 inch TV or a 65 inch TV and it needed to be LG or a Vizio TV it could take you quite a while to just dig through all that to find it and so you can just complain all the time like oh I can't find what I need or oh this is just something we have to deal with all the time and that's what most of the other co-workers at this place did or you could try to look for a solution so one of the things that I did one day was I decided just to empty up the TV cage and take out all the metal case TVs, all the box TVs. I decided I was going to 
tried to test them all if I had the time and then just start labeling all of them. And then once I emptied out the whole TV cage, I came up with a great idea. Why not make sure to separate all the box TVs from the metal cased TVs, one. Make sure everything's labeled, two. Organize everything by size, three. And so when I was putting all the box TVs in the t TV cage, I started organizing them all by size, from the biggest to the smallest, the 65 inches to the 42s. And then I got them to fit perfectly in the cage from one end to the, the next end of all the box TVs. And then I thought, man, it would be great if we could have like a platform above this so we wouldn't have to worry about taking TVs from the top of the pile affecting the bottom of the pile because before it was just a, a pile of boxes and cases and it you know you had to worry about breaking the TVs when you were trying to get a specific one or you had to move like five TVs just to get to one TV so I was trying to make the space more functional <clears throat> by having TVs being enabled to be stacked uh, not directly on top of each other but still being able to be stacked to use as much space as you could And so, for like, oh, we're a cheapo business. We can't really just buy something. We're going to have to make something. But luckily, I had a carpenter friend who once built a crate for the company and another guy who remodeled houses a lot working. And so I talked, I came up with my idea of just having like, like two long boards across. And then I talked to one of the guys and asked him how this would be feasible because it was just a graded cage like a chain link fence kind of and he gave me an idea of snapping two pieces of wood together on the end and screw them together between the chain linked part of the fence so I could have a board coming off of it and I was like, I was like that's a great idea and it was easy enough to do on the one side but remember this cage was in the corner of the room so the other side is kind of hard to get uh, two pieces of wood and drill them together because it's, it's backed into a corner so I talked to the other guy and he came up with another idea which was you could get some you could get some u-shaped bolts and you can drill holes in the piece of the wood and put the the u-shaped bolt through the wood and then just put a nut and screw it tight, put a nut on the other end, screw the U-bolt tight. So then you'd have your piece of wood, you have the U-bolt come in, go through the chain link fence, tighten up the bolts, and then you had a platform to put your boards on to go all the way across. And so we got, you know, this wood and these bolts from my Menards for, who knows, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, maybe cheaper than that. Just buying some wood at the store. We already had some screws and drills and we built this platform and then we just put the TVs on top and since we had the problem of the TVs being too small to go across the two boards that we had laid out we put some plywood across some sections of the board so we could put smaller TVs on and then the whole thing all looked nice and organized and pretty and so by stop by not complaining and looking for a solution we came up with a solution and by not and by me not trying to figure it out by myself and asking guys who knew a lot more than me you solve the problem it's great you take one person's idea you take another person's idea and you just build and layer it and it's really just a new mindset to have at work ideally you work for yourself because you're probably like, in this day and age, you're like, why would I fix things? Why would I do any work, work harder at my job when you know I have barely enough money to pay the bills? Well, you gotta show that, you gotta prove your value. You gotta exceed your value. If you know what the bare minimum is and you exceed your value all the time, then you can ask for a raise or then you can ask for a promotion. And they say no, well then you can keep learning new things, keep exceeding your value. And then they say no, well, then you always have the option of sharing all these stories and sharing all of you learned at another company or somewhere else and getting paid more there or 
just starting your own company or starting your own job or task to doing things that you learned when you were there. But I'd like to go back to the main theme of this episode of the common sense, which is don't complain. Uh, why would you complain at work? Why would you criticize your boss? Why would you do? Why would you do any of that? At work, you know, uh, you can go home and complain to your partner or your family or whatever about your job, and that's outside of work. You know, you could get some beers, let off some steam, but it's still not a good habit to have, but at least you're doing it outside of work. Ideally, you're not doing it with other coworkers or your bosses or managers at all, ever. Even outside of work, you're not complaining to the people who work there because you don't want that to be your reputation. It's something that should be common sense these days. But it's not always. I mean, yeah, everybody always does it. Ask yourself how easy it is to just complain. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. It's, it's difficult to not complain. Remember, these complaints are like homing missiles that always come right back to you. How else do I want to wrap this up? Maybe I'll share another story on complaining. Um, what's another good story on complaining? Being in a relationship. It's kind of the, the same thing. Relationships are spread out throughout our lives. You have your work relationship, you have your romantic relationship, you have your relationship with your family and it's kind of like would you ever complain to the person directly would you complain outside of that relationship ideally it doesn't work out good I was in a romantic relationship with somebody once and I complain about everything complain about going and doing things I complain about you know, having to communicate all the time and complaining about going out to eat or picking a date or going out and doing things or complaining about some things that you notice about the person like you're way too extreme about your cleaning habits but then that always comes right back to you and worse if you have the habit of doing it outside the relationship the other person might still find out as well. You see a lot of stand-up comedians always joke about their significant others, their partners, all the time. A lot of people probably do this as well. That's why they can relate to the stand-up comedians. But those can also get back to the source. And this actually happened to me once before. You know, I was complaining about said person, and maybe it was like the universe complaining about a significant other who has dating. Uh, Kristen, sorry. And it was just like the universe knows. And I like received a phone call, and I was just talking to her, and just acting like things were good and normal. And then I thought I had hung up, but I didn't. And I said something like, oh, yeah, she's on the line, and, you know, she's complaining, we're fighting. And she was, like, a very private woman. She didn't like anything at all talked about. She didn't like the relationship at all talked about. She didn't want anybody to know. She didn't want anybody to know if there was fights. She didn't want anybody to know anything. And, you know, once the other person knows, that could be devastating to a relationship. Just the simple act of complaining. You know, it takes years to build a reputation, and it only takes a few moments to destroy it. 
remember that. I think this is good for the fourth episode. I'm going to try to keep these to half an hour, an hour. Hopefully I'll have more people join and we'll get more of an interaction going on. As always, I ask if you can leave your, feed, your feedback on what the common sense theme was, which is don't complain at work, don't, uh, don't criticize your boss, and offer your solution. That's the common sense theme for tonight. Let me know what you thought about it, what you thought about this episode, and I appreciate all of you, and I hope you have a great day. This is the Common Sense Show, signing off.